Chapter 11, Lesson 3, Essential Question. How can you classify and compare quadrilaterals? In this, we need to know that quad means four, so we're going to be talking about four-sided polygons today. Unlock the problem. A seating chart for a baseball field has many four-sided figures, or quadrilaterals. What types of quadrilaterals can you find in the seating chart? So if we underline what we're being asked to find, it's what type of quadrilaterals can we find? And quad, again, means four. And they're talking about this seating chart here. And before we can list the type of quadrilaterals, we need to know the different types there are. So right here, it says there are five special types of quadrilaterals. You can classify quadrilaterals by their properties, such as parallel sides and perpendicular sides. Parallel lines are lines that are always the same distance apart, and perpendicular lines are lines that intersect to form four right angles. So just a quick reminder, um, perpendicular lines are like these. They'll never ever cross, while perpendicular kind of meet at a T, forming a 90 degree angle there. So let's look through the table so that we can get the five different types of quadrilaterals before we can answer our question. The first one is done for you. A general quadrilateral has four sides and four angles. There's nothing specific about it, just that there's four sides and four angles. And we can tell that, at least right here, there's no tick marks or anything. So none of the sides are the congruent and none of the angles are congruent. The next one we're going to look at is right here, a parallelogram. A parallelogram has opposite sides that are congruent and parallel. And the reason how that we know that they are congruent is because um, this side and this side have one tick mark. So that means that they're the exact same uh, length. And these two have two tick marks, which means those two are the exact same length. And a parallelogram means that the sides have to be parallel. The next three quadrilaterals that we're going to talk about are actually parallelograms as well, but they are more specific forms of parallelograms. So right here we have a rectangle is a special parallelogram because it has opposite sides that are congruent, but they're also parallel, meaning they're never going to cross. But it also has some other stipulations to become a rectangle. So it's a special parallelogram with four right angles, we can see that in the corner, these form boxes, and four pairs of perpendicular sides. And again, we can see that right here, that um, with these being 90 degree angles, that they form a T, so they are perpendicular sides. The next one is called a rhombus, and it's special, a parallelogram, meaning that the opposite sides are congruent, um, but in the special case of a rhombus, all four sides are the exact same length. And so that means that the a rhombus is a special parallelogram with four congruent sides. Nothing to do with angles, just sides. Now, if you put those together, you're going to get um, a very special parallelogram, a square. And a square is very special because it has four congruent sides and four right angles. So you can see the main difference right here between a rhombus and a square is even though that all the sides are the same length, a rhombus kind of looks like a squished square, like somebody's pushed on it and tilted it, while the square is straight up and down lines. And then our last quadrilateral, because it tra our trapezoid is not a parallelogram, uh, the rectangle, the rhombus, and the square are also considered parallelograms. The trapezoid is not. It is just a quadrilateral. 
And so a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. And you'll eventually see parallel showed as this. So there's two directional arrows showing that they're going the same direction. Um, and so a trapezoid just has one pair of parallel signs. So now that we've talked about the six different types of quadrilaterals, um, what types of quadrilaterals do you see in this picture? Uh, press pause, write down as many as you can find. So I quickly just outlined ones that I saw. Um, this one is a trapezoid because this one, this side and that side are um, parallel while the sides come in a little bit. And then I see a lot of rectangles, um, which rectangles are the same as parallelograms. And then most of them, um, as far as I can tell, are mainly just plain quadrilaterals, not any special ones. I don't see any squares except for the diamond, but that's not the seating area. This part's pretty close. So I would say that there are rectangles, parallelograms, and trapezoids. For this activity, you are just going to draw right on to your Venn diagram here, and you're going to look at your shapes from your previous page as a resource and examples, and so you're not actually going to be cutting anything. Um, so right here, I want you to draw a parallelogram, and in this circle, draw a rhombus, and draw a rectangle and then draw squares. And in this bottom circle, you're going to draw a trapezoid. Now remember, these are all quadrilaterals, and so that's what this outer box is. And then within the quadrilaterals, you can call them parallelograms or trapezoids, and then within the parallelograms, even farther into them. And after you draw those, we will go through these sentences together and we will fill them out based on the pictures and the Venn diagram. So right now, draw an example for each different shape listed. Here I have some examples um, based on like some pattern blocks that you may see in the classroom. So this brown one right here, this one is a rhombus. It has four congruent sides, and um, that's all that it has. And, I mean, it's a parallelogram because all the sides are going the same direction. So this one is a rhombus, and it needs to go in just the rhombus side. Okay? Um, this blue one, let's look at it. It has four sides, and they are all the same shape but they're not at 90 degrees and so this blue one is also a rhombus. This pink one is, let's see, well it is a parallelogram so let's start it right here and this side and that side's parallel, parallel but they're perpendicular so they have right angles that means that this one is actually a rectangle. So it's a parallelogram, but it's more specifically a rectangle. This orange one, the picture is kind of sideways, but let's look at it. Four congruent sides and 90 degree angles. That means that this one is a super special parallelogram because it has the parallel sides but it has congruent sides and right angles. So this orange one is considered a square. So it is all three of them. And then we have right here our trapezoid. It has one pair of parallel lines or sides. These two will eventually intersect if the lines keep going. So this one is a trapezoid. And then parallelogram, I don't have a picture of an example, but it would be something along these lines, like a squished rectangle. And a quadrilateral would just be four sides, um, not necessarily parallel. One, two, three, four. 
It has four sides, but nothing special. So now that we have them categorized and classified, let's go through these sentences. A rhombus is blank a square. Is a rhombus always a square? No, because these ones aren't squares. Is it sometimes a square? Well, it overlaps here, and this square could be considered a rhombus. So, yes, it is sometimes a square. Uh, the next one says a parallelogram is a blank a rectangle. So, is a parallelogram always a rectangle? Nope, this one's not a rectangle, but it's still a parallelogram. Um, but this rectangle is a parallelogram, so it can sometimes be a parallelogram or a rectangle. So a parallelogram is sometimes a rectangle. The next one. A rhombus is a parallel is blank a parallelogram. Always, sometimes, or never. Well, to even make it in here, it has to have two sets of parallel lines. And so a rhombus always has two sets of parallel lines. That means a rhombus is always a parallelogram. And our last one, a trapezoid is blank a parallelogram. Is a trapezoid, which is right here, always a parallelogram? <laughs> nope, not even in the same circle. Is a trapezoid sometimes a parallelogram? Again, they do not even overlap, so the answer is no. A trapezoid is never a parallelogram because it only has one set of parallel lines. And the actual last one, a square is blank a rhombus. So, is a square always a rhombus? Well, it's in the rhombus circle, so that means that it is always going to also be a rhombus. Because remember, spares, squares are super special. So quickly, looking at number one and two, and I, my pictures aren't going with me, but explain why the circle for parallelograms does not intersect with the circle for trapezoids. Press pause, write a sentence as to why trapezoids and parallelograms are n have nothing more in common than just four sides. Simply, and I kind of said it before, a parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. A trapezoid has one pair. And number two, draw a quadrilateral with four pairs of perpendicular sides and four congruent sides. Press pause and see if you can draw the quadrilateral they are explaining. Your quadrilateral that you drew should end up being a square. For your share and show, you will need a ruler, and you have three problems to work through. Make sure you, that you read all of the directions, and you may begin. Using your ruler, you should have found that side AD and BC are the same length, as well as AB is the same length as side DC. And so, are any of the sides congruent? Yes, and then you should have marked them. B, how many right angles does it have? There are none. And then, how many pairs of parallel sides does the quadrilateral have? So how many sets of two are parallel? There are two. So how would you classify this, par this quadrilateral? Two pairs, parallel sides, no right angles. This is simply a parallelogram. For number two and three, you need to have classified it as many ways as possible using the words quadrilateral, parallelogram, rectangle, rhombus, square, or trapezoid. So any and all of them if they work on it. I will... Um, just have the list show up of what they are. Number two has three, a quadrilateral, four sides, parallelogram, two pairs of parallel sides, and a rectangle, four 90 degree angles. And number three is a quadrilateral because there's four sides, and then it's a trapezoid because it has this side and this side being parallel. And those are the only two that you can use to classify number three. Remember as you work that squares are super special and have a lot of labels.